grounds of the Noman School of Visual Effects. I'm sitting with none other than Vance Kovacs. You Hello. had the tremendous privilege of having you sit first for the <laughs> first ever, the inaugural right. Zebra Summit. Vance Kovacs, what's the feeling like in the green screen room today here in Hollywood? <laughs> Describe the feeling of being number one and taking us into what is going to be three days of ZBrush action with uh, some other great artists. Uh, How do you feel about that? It's good. I'm, hap I'm, I'm privileged to be here. I know there's a lot of guys here I can, I can uh, tap into getting their info, getting the scoop on how they use ZBrush. So cool. uh, I like the program. It's relatively new to me. I, I explained in my little talk, I've, it's only been the last couple of years. Okay. I've been using it, and it seems like I use it more and more. So, But yeah, uh, Paul made me the first guy out. So that was uh, a little nerve-wracking. I'm, I'm not normally uh, in front of so many people and not ever live-streamed. So Right, yeah. Well, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> there you go. It's not every day that we're streaming live across the world from my That's office. That's right. <laughs> hey, from my desk, you know, yeah. this type of thing. So you, you mentioned a few things that were pivotal for me while you were demonstrating the software. You, you have a very painterly quality to your work, mm -hmm. and I think that... I've seen your, your 2D stuff, and I think that the way that you were demonstrating ZBrush is a very, there's a hybridization happening, but at the same time, you've managed to maintain that painterly quality. Tell us about that. Is that like maybe the way that you're, you're approaching it uh, or just trying to be loose with it at all times? Uh, it, I don't think it was a conscious thing. It might be just how my hand moves, you know, and it felt very, uh, when I moved into doing ZBrush and my tablet, and it felt like the same moves I make which is this hand holding the mic. Right. But um, <laughs> the same moves I make, like when I'm sculpting out a shoulder or something, and, I, you know, when I'm painting it, I'm, I'm feeling the way that that form curves or right. if I'm rendering it out. Um, and I feel like I can do that in ZBrush. Like I can carve it out. And like when you're working on a canvas, and, you can push the paint around physically, yeah. you know, if you're using oil. But even say. when I'm thinking of that form, the way the form turns in space in 2D, right. I'm doing it. I mean, essentially, it is 2D, right? I mean, right. ZBrush is faking us out. All 3D programs are faking us out. Right, 3D is you and I. I mean, yeah, essentially, it's all 2D, right? right? You're dealing with a screen, and it's, it's faking your 3D. So you feel like you can push things around. And so it just, you know, and I'm, I'm, uh, I like the rougher stuff, you know? I, I like the, uh, the mystery th things can still have. They're not completely spelled out. Right. Um, kind of like an erratic in, like, jazz music or something, like an accidental in music. You have, like, this... Yeah. Yeah. Not like a harmonic. Or if you listen to a song and you never knew it, you know, like a Led Zeppelin song or right. something, and you're uh, Battle of Evermore, or right. you, you, know, you mumble something. I, and you're like, I, what? I don't know what he said, but like as a kid or when you first listen to that, like you, you sort of, it evokes this other thing. Right. <laughs> this other world, and it's almost like you come to a point like, I don't want to know. What he you said. Know, like, oh yeah, it was just about paying the rent that one month. <laughs> right. Really, that, was, that was epic. You know, that was about the epic battle of the end of the world. You know, so... So yeah, I think all the time in 2D and painting and it just, when I went into 3D, it, it was the same thing. So oh. you mentioned actually during the presentation for, for the people who haven't or are starting to tune in now from around the world, I, I would like to say that you mentioned that you were new to ZBrush, definitely not new to art. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you've been at it for some time. Yeah. Take us back to the beginning. How did you get started? Um, in ZBrush? No, in, 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 art. in art in general. Where's, where's the beginning of the Vance Kovacs experience? Um, where's it happen? I think like anybody... You know, you're a five-year-old with crayons and, and pencils, and you're you're drawing characters, and you're you know right. watching cartoons, and always drawing guys and monsters, and, and superheroes, etc. Yeah, looking at wrestlers. So, I never dreamed I'd be doing it as a job, and I never that wasn't even my trajectory. Oh, up here, sorry. Right. Ah, they're giving you the sign from behind the camera. Um, <laughs> so, I um, I met Justin. He's uh, my workmate. That's uh, Justin Sweet. Justin Sweet. Uh, we've been friends for before we were artists. Uh, cool. I think okay. I was working at Starbucks or something. I took some night courses at a local uh, college, Fullerton College, here in Orange County. Happened to be this guy named Marshall Vandruff who uh, was teaching art. He was an illustrator. Oh, wow. And the way he talked about it was like, these guys were rock stars, you know, like Drew Struzan and N.C. Wyeth, and and he well, was like yes. all these guys that we were, we were just discovering, like in illustrators' books and Maxfield Parrish and N.C. Wyeth and Arthur Rackham, and this guy knew them all. He was showing slides of them, and we thought, whoa, you know, like, we thought we would go into art together. We both liked art, but we thought, you know, his dad was like in, in restaurant business, so he, um, 
we thought, well, maybe we could like design menus or something. I don't know, draw hamburgers and right. salads, you know, because those menus, they have art. That was about it. That was like the highest aspiration I had. I didn't think I'd be doing movies or, right. or any of the stuff I'm doing, you know. So, uh, but taking Marshall's class was, I think the way he talked about it, he sort of romanticized the idea of being an artist. And, you know, during that time, there wasn't a concept art industry. Video games were, uh, they were in just infancy, coming out. infancy, yeah. Uh, I mean, it was coming out of Super Nintendo. Right. Uh, PlayStation had come out two years after I had worked in games. Right. I mean, we're talking the first really play, cool. We're talking the first PlayStation. The first. Talk about, you know, this is going old school yes. for a moment. So uh, I was working with guys uh, when I was working at Interplay that were using a mouse. Right. To it's back in probably 94, 95 To paint their pictures. Yeah, around 95. Flicking colors. Right, one pixel at a time. Yeah. Type stuff. Because, you know, their image had to be right. 32 by 32 pixels. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I was one of the first, I think, of the company that migrated, because I was doing concept art. We didn't have any restrictions, so we started working digitally, and um, I was already nerding out on that stuff anyway. Right. So uh, it, it became accustomed to it. I, Justin was going to college at that time, and I was showing him, like, look at this, you know, look at this program. It's just like painting. And he started taking to it, and then he got a job there, and we shared an office for five years wow. together. and. Uh, messed around, played games, painted pictures. It was great. Sweet deal. So the yeah. moral of the story is be nice to your coworkers and uh, <laughs> you never know where you'll end up with That's them. Right. So uh, alongside that, we're talking about the, the beginning of when I think it's fair to say that the industry of video games really took a leap forward. I, I know that a lot of people would argue that probably with the Sega and Genesis and the Super Nintendo being very sort of formidable. I think that the next gen craze could be sort of focused in on that time period for the PlayStation, like you're saying. In that vein, what's your favorite game from that time? From? From, from that era. Just, just when it's becoming sort of next gen with the PlayStation 1. Do you remember the first PlayStation 1 game? I, from, well, we played a ton of Toshinden. Right. A ton. Because <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I, I, I remember mine, and I thought I was quite scared, actually, to be honest with you. It was like this, this uh, friend of mine invited me over and said, you want to play this thing called the PlayStation? I said, what the heck is that? You know? and I, so I, I rode the bike over, and it was um, Resident Evil. Resident Evil. The first Resident Evil, how yeah. far we've come. And I thought, what, yeah. is, what manner of video game is this? <laughs> but I knew then that something had changed. Do you feel that you had mm. the same sort of, the art had gone so far in, in such a short time? Yeah. And it was heading somewhere in a storytelling yeah, fashion, you know, too. I think I, I've always seen a potential in games. And still now. Like, I still right. feel like I haven't seen it yet. Right. That's why I want to do it myself. Like, I, I might be deluded, you know. But I feel like, oh, no, if it could look like this, then right. I think that would hit another level. You know, I grew up on point-and-click adventure games, all the LucasArts games. Right on. Old PC games, uh, Mist and Riven. And, right. Uh, you know, me and my brothers had like a trash 80. We were playing like Dungeons of Daggereth and yeah, all these Carmen like, San Diego, <laughs> yeah, like, so, in the world. Um, <laughs> on a pet think, computer. <laughs> yeah, growing up on that stuff, I, I, it was never like the art or anything was like the end all. Like, whoa, look at that. I think it was like, well, I, like it sort of painted a picture of what it could look like. So, but there were great games, you know, like The Dig, which Ian McCaig worked on. He was an yeah, artist, way back. you know, making pixel art. Um, and I think I was already gravitating towards that, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, I, the video game industry, when I was in it, uh, it was changing every week, man. I right. mean, it was, everything was always rapid. We were a new video, uh, you know, it's when 3D cards first hit the scene. Everything was done in software, and then these 3D cards, like, you can do 3D on your right. computer. It will do it all, you know? You don't have to write code for a 3D engine, all that stuff. So, um, and I still think it's exciting. I still think it's an exciting medium to work in. Yeah, and then so. more accessible than ever before, I think. Yeah, totally. With some of the things you were showing today as yeah. well, like the Dynamesh and stuff, I think that that's the closest thing to... Yeah, the fact that I can get my... Around. I can go from concept to final model in a game that people can play and explore around and, and, and move in the world that I just sculpted and textured. It's awesome. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. So tell us a little more. The relationship with Justin Sweet goes back. For those people who don't know Justin, he's another very talented concept artist in the world of... Uh, in, in this world. Mm -hmm. What, uh, what can you tell us about this project you're working on with him um, most recently? Uh, we did a Kickstarter at the end of last year, right at the okay. beginning of this year, called uh, Eclipse, right. uh, The Well in the Black Sea. Uh, this is like 10 years of our, um, this world we've been developing together. Right. Um, that was our favorite memory, I think, from Interplay in those early years was just concepting out a world. We had a big whiteboard and we'd draw stuff up there and we'd you know, banter back and forth and, and draw pictures and put, you know, like, 
we just we really we we realized back then that we want to create worlds. We want to create the characters and get in there and the environments and the whole thing. So and he's got the same passion for it that I do, you know. Um, so we started talking about this own project we've been wanting to do. We've sketched, we've talked. We thought we got to get this thing out in some form. And so an art book felt like this is the first step. We'll put out an art book and that will be, if we can get it funded, then we'll be funding the pitch for a bigger project, like a, right. a game project, you know. And so that's the next step is to, um, is to take those, all those concepts. We're, we're basically doing the concept book before we do the, the project. We're letting right. the Kickstarter be a pitch, like a Hollywood pitch. You'd pitch right. to a studio, but we're pitching it to Kickstarter and seeing if people like it and they want to see this kind of thing. Um, then they might be interested in a game version of it where they can, right. and, you know, and it's not really a game. I think it's a little bit more like a, if you're familiar with some of the more offbeat games like uh, Dear Esther, and um, Journey and Ico and um, yeah, not that those are too offbeat, but uh, there's a there's a there's a genre of games out there that I've always been gravitating towards. They're they're really immersive. They're they're provocative. They're, they're you kind of leave those games and your brain's still going. Like what was that exactly? So I felt like about Shadow of the Colossus in that totally. in that vein as well. Totally, it was very that's strange. in that vein. There's this built up empathy that you get for these characters. Yeah. After a while, you start thinking, why am I? Why am I hunting this thing? Does yeah, it yeah. make any, you yeah. know, this humanistic thing starts to happen where you're like, wait, I'm enthralled in this tale that had no tail at the beginning of really, it was kind of a very basic thing. And then suddenly you're sort of immersed in it and yeah. you're like, oh, here I am in this very odd place that I'm connected to this yeah. thing now. I think that that's, that's a great challenge. So it's, yeah. it's um, the social media tools give us an opportunity, like you're yeah. saying with Kickstarter, to test the waters as a barometer for, yeah. you know, the popularity of a project. Yeah, you know, as artists, we're, we're so much in our own heads. Right. I don't know if, is there an audience for that? Do people really like, I, I like it. And that's, right. I guess when it comes down to it, you know, at the end of the day, I just want to do what I like doing. Right. If there's a bunch of people that can join in in that vision, like, yeah, we love it too. Let's, let's do it. Then awesome. If not, then I won't be doing big projects. <laughs> I think there's an audience for everything. I keep saying that to some friends of mine. I think there's an audience for everything. You mentioned earlier a Led Zeppelin sort of reference. Yeah. I think even you know, in all facets of art that there is that possibility that there's some place somewhere uh, a few people are going to be into it because yeah. if you like it and, and you have this incredible passion about it, then it's yeah. impossible that other people can't recognize that. You know? My gut I, tells me that. Yeah. That, like, we just need a thousand people. If there's a thousand people on this planet, yeah, kind of like what you like. If you can get two thousand people, then well, they all have a friend. You know, so yeah, you do have two thousand people so waiting to hear about you it. You can get your project funded. Absolutely. You know, and I when we did our Kickstarter, we looked at our Facebooks and Twitters and all that stuff, and I thought, amongst all the friends and people we went to high school with, and right. I think there's a thousand people between us certainly that would buy a book from us. We haven't done a book yet, so let's try that first, and right. and so we did it. You know, and it was successful, and we're, we're grateful for it. So uh, very close to finishing the book. Okay. So it's going to go off to the printer pretty quick here. Everybody um, hearing that, right? I know. We haven't been updating our Kickstarter, sorry. But they will. <laughs> so, um, but we just, been, we just want to make great images. That's yeah. it. When it comes down to it, it, it's not about making money. It's not, if it can pay our bills. And That's a great make, bonus. Then, man, awesome. Yeah. I can do what I always love to do. Yeah. That's the most important message of all, I think, here today, is that uh, there's a lot of people going to be coming through here in three days that are doing what they love to do, and we're all sort of brought together by that. Yeah. This book that we're talking about, um, the tools that are being used are a mix of traditional and digital to bring the images yeah. to life. So that's incredible as well. Yeah, Tell you know, a little just, bit about that. Justin paints in oil. That's, that's his, I'd say that's his love, okay. for sure, oil paint. And that's you mentioned just, drawing, sketching uh, with a pencil and a paper. I think yes. it would be safe to say that that might be your... Uh, first, is that your first go-to? Yeah, I'm. I'm a mixed bag. Okay. I, I think I. Um, I think I enjoy the computer more than Justin does. I think Justin has found cool things to do in it, and he's he's competent. Right. He pulls out paintings and drawings and 3D, and his his sculptures look awesome, and um, all that stuff's great. But I think if his if he could abandon it all, he would. <laughs> For me, I still look at it as like, oh, that's like a a path to like doing our video game and. Right. Um, I still love that the whole potential of telling story in those kind of worlds and that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, I've never thought of myself as like a gallery artist or a, a that kind of thing. I, just, I think I like designing cool stuff and right. um, for people to enjoy. And if we can go a little deeper with our Eclipse project, which is the plan, uh, to do something a little uh, not so just 
commercial summer, summer blockbuster, that, kind of, that stuff's cool, and it's always fun to work on, but, you know, as artists, I think we all have, like, you know, you start having kids, and right. you start dealing with <laughs> yes, people dying in your family, and right. tragedies, and the anxieties, and uh, it, it produces a different kind of art, you know? It produces some struggle, and I think a lot of people resonate with it, and I'd, I'd like to see more of that get into games, get into, right. you know, because I think we all feel it, you know? We're probably playing games to escape it. So either that, uh, yeah, playing games, music, or reading of some kind, something is happening there, and and taking it from the page, from the sort of illustrated page yeah. to a, a game experience is like a whole other realm. Because what yeah. I think it's then you have to start thinking about things like you know soundtrack, yeah, which plays an incredible role. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm going to assume that that's like a big deal as well to you, huge. Because to me, it's it sets the stage. You were talking totally. about listening to music while creating visual art, and I was thinking, you know, I can empathize with that because there's a lot of times the certain type of music or uh, some kind of sound will generate a visual representation of what. Totally. And I think there's a there's a lot of people that get that, and I, I sort of gravitate towards that. Yeah, you know, I talked about that. It's it's. Um for me, it's it's by pure inspiration that I work, right. and so it's like it's like I'm uh, sitting out in the ocean with my surfboard, waiting, and yeah. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for that wave to come because right. I know I can't I can't manufacture it, right? right? I can't go like here's the newest creative thing I'm doing in my life, <laughs> you know? Like I have to wait for it to come, and I have to be sensitive enough to it that this oh, this is it, this is it, and I'm gonna ride that thing as long as I can ride it. Um, so music. Is, is that, like it's like a pure wave. Like it, it is an art form that, I think it's the quickest art mo form to an emotion that there is. Like you can uh, be in a good mood and then a sad song comes on and- You're like, oh darn. Like the feeling is there. Right. Instantly, I think more than any other kind of art form. Like movies take a little more investment, you know, games take some investment, but music uh, is huge. So every project I'm on, I assemble a, a playlist for that project right. and I get the music that I think feels like the art I want to produce or right. try to find music. Capture that, those visual snapshots totally. of that, em, that yeah, moment, that emotion. Try to channel it a little bit, you know, right. try to get it in there. If I'm doing monsters and roided up dudes and I want to listen to pumping music and um, if I'm doing scenes that are beautiful, serene, Narnia, whatever, then I'm listening to Debussy and, and right. music and that, that brings out that, that more of that mysterious fog, you know, you'd find in a forest or something. So, yeah, it's, it's huge for me. I think that what I'm getting input into my ears or surroundings, it's, it's coming out, you know. Well, it shows it's looking good. I mean, you know, so <laughs> Thank you. we don't change things when they're working fine <laughs> for us. So you, ha you talked a, m a moment ago about family and sort of other responsibilities. Mm -hmm. What kind of advice would you give to artists who are sort of coming into these types of situations because a lot of guys that I talk to and girls that I talk to in the field, they talk about how when they had their first child, for instance, or they have a family that's expanding and that they've lost a lot of time. Yeah. What, what sort of advice would you give to some, some people like that? It's tough. I think once you, if you feel like you want to take on a family, right. take on kids, and now that's... Because you have kids of your own. Yes. I got two daughters, right. 13 and, and 10. Um, they're job number one. Right. My art career is secondary to their safety, to their maturing, to like I'm their father first. Maybe you're right? part-time drive, like full-time yeah. driver, maybe at this point, ten yeah. and thirteen, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Hey, drive Carting me here, around. drive me here. Yeah, they go I... to their dance classes. Right, they yeah. go here. They go, and then maybe some time to paint and draw. Right? <laughs> it's tough. The and war yeah, of art, is yeah. what they call it. <laughs> my my biggest advice would be don't neglect uh, your family. Right. Don't do it. Uh, I had good, there was good advice from Stephen Silver. He's a I cartoonist. know Stephen Silver, yeah. I just did a convention with him. Cool. He was one of the speakers. Stephen's got, got an app out, actually, if we can mention that. Oh, he's got a few yeah, apps, he's right? Yeah, he's got that po is a like po a posing pose, app. Yeah, like a posing app, if you're interested uh, in models. Uh, yeah. He had a good, he's got a real clear, like, uh, he's, I should probably interview him, but um, he's got a real <laughs> clear, be. like, goal-oriented work day. Like, here's my goals for the day. Right. And I'm going to get those things done. And when I get those things done, it's my time. Right. I don't do tomorrow's work today. I don't uh -huh. try to cram in tomorrow into today. That's yeah. my time. So yeah. he capitalized on that. One of his big goals was just, I want to work at home and be with, watch my kids grow up while I work. And so everything kind of goes, gets filtered through that goal. Right. So admirable, goal. admirable cause. It's great. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think when you, you'll find, I think later in life, you will not regret it. And, and if you do the opposite, you will regret it. You'll regret the time you did not spend with them or the time you didn't 
and it might have cost you an right. afternoon of painting or drawing right. or might have cost you a Saturday where like, oh, I was going to work on my own project. Right. And there is always that pull. Um, but I want to be there while my girls grow up and they'll, they'll be at a certain age where they're off on their own and I can, and then you can, I can walk away again. To it. Yeah, that's what a friend of mine life, said so, to me. Yeah, you know. a friend of mine said that the other day. He said, oh, you know, when, when there's uh, a new person in the family, I just kind of didn't do as much work as I could and now I'm back. So I said, oh, cool. Okay, that's... Yeah, I think it perfect sense. You get some time, maybe hopefully later, later in life, if you're not completely fried. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so, but it's that's a tough balance, and I don't know if I have the right like. Here's the recipe for it. I, I think you have to work it out, but I'd say don't neglect it. So, yeah, in, in working in the studio environments, whether you're there in person or working remotely, yeah. I think that that's a great opportunity to see what the limits of your. Um, teamwork capacity are. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be tested. Yeah. I love it. I mean, I love it when I'm on a job. I mean, it's a, I live more inland from Hollywood, so I'm, right. it's, it's a good... Away uh, from the glitz and glamour. Yeah, and the, it was purposely so, but right. um, when there's a job and I have to come to the studio, uh, I like it. I mean, I like soaking it up and cool. getting people's input and, and see, I, you know, slightly competitive, so I want to be good, you know, like, is there some guy on the project? I was just on a project with uh, Ian McCaig, Claire Wendling. Pretty good deal. Uh, <laughs> pretty good deal. <laughs> to, to be pretty intimidated, like, yeah. oh, man, I got to step it up. Like, this is my A game. You know, right. I can't slack off here. So it, I like that, though, because it pushes me, you know, put my art, uh, get it out there, get go a little further with it. So, yeah. I'll tell you what. They're giving me the finger of uh, death on the back end of All the right. camera here, telling me to wrap it up. Live from the Noman School of Visual Effects. Once again, thank you so much, Vance Kovacs, for sitting with me today here. Absolutely. Pleasure. I'm, yeah, it's my pleasure. I'm humbled. I can't wait uh, to talk more with you off the camera and continue this wonderful new sort of uh, friendship we have here. On behalf of everybody here, we'll take it back to you inside the green screen hangar here at the ZBrush Summit. Paul, take it away.